Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to talk about file sharing and how do you get file sharing going on your server. Now, file sharing is what most people think about when they think about a server and that's where you store your files and documents in a central place that anybody then can log into that server and get access to those files and folders. And it makes it convenient because usually most of your storage is on your server. You have less storage on your laptop or iOS device and so you'd rather just access that stuff from a remote location rather than taking up hard drive space uh, in your mobile devices. So let's take a look at how file sharing works. You'll notice here I've got two tabs on the file sharing uh, service. I've got SharePoints and Connected Users. Uh, SharePoints is basically the different files that I have opened up to share. So these are things that people can access. And then Connected Users tells me who's actually connected to the server. And so if I just click this, you can see I've got a couple of people connected to the server. It's got their IP address, uh, how long they've been idle or on the server, and the connection type. And we'll talk about what the connection type is in a minute. And I can actually disconnect anybody who's on here just by clicking this button down here. Or I can actually send a message to somebody if they've got their iMessage up to let them know, hey, I want you to get off the server or there's a problem or whatever I want to say to them. Let's go back to the share points here for a minute. And let me show you what it looks like. We're going to take a look at the groups folder because this automatically gets set up uh, when you start uh, your server process or when you create a group. So let's click this little uh, gear down here and let's edit this SharePoint so I can show you what the screen looks like. Now you'll notice that I've got the group's name up here and I've got a, a slash groups at the top. That basically tells me where groups is located uh, on my server. It's kind of at the top level there. If I really wanted to see where they were located, I could click this little view files button here and it'll take me in to show me where it's located. You can see that the groups are at the top level of the server hard drive. There's the groups folder and you can see I've got a couple of group folders in there already. One for work group and one for local accounts. So that's where those things get stored. So it's nice to kind of know where those are at. Let's go back here to file sharing again and let's go back into groups. Now you'll notice down here I've got a list of names and these are people who have uh, some level of permission to access this particular groups folder. You'll notice I have the system administrator, the system group, and everyone else. And you'll notice they each have different uh, permissions here. And I've got a little drop down. Let me just show you what these are. You'll notice it says read write, read only, write only, or no access. Now, read write means that you have the ability to access the folder. You can write uh, to the folder. You can upload things to it. You can access those files, download them. Everything's good. I've got full access to the folder. Read only means I can only get into the folder and check out the files. I can't upload anything. I really can't change much, but I can at least check out what's in there and view them. Write only means I can't really see what's in the folder, but I do have the ability to upload something to the folder so that if I want to put something, if I want someone to upload something to me, but I don't want them to see what's in the folder, I can set it up this way and that way they won't know what's in there, but they can at least send me the file I want to to the folder I want them to send it to. And then you have no access, which literally means that that folder doesn't exist to that person who's logging in, whoever this person is over here. That when they log in, they don't even see the folder because they don't have access to it. And so you can see I've got all these people, the system administrator can do whatever he wants, and the group and everyone else can only read what's in the folder. Now I can add people whenever I want. Just click the plus button. If I start typing my name, there I come up, I can add myself, and then I can give permissions. You'll notice I have the ability to do all the permissions I spoke about except for the no access because just by the fact of adding myself here, I'm assuming you want access to the file at some level. If your name is not in here or you're not in any of these groups, you won't see this file or folder anyway. And that's why that's, that's set up that way. So I can add myself. I'm going to take that off. Or I can even add groups. I can go work group and actually add the work group and make the changes this way and then everybody that falls in that work group has those permissions to the file. So if I have only read, read only on this for the work group then that means everybody in this particular work group can only read. They can't do anything else. So it makes it convenient if you're setting up multiple users to do it by groups. I'm just going to get rid of that because I'm going to leave it alone. Now down below you can see we have various uh, settings here. Right? We've got the ability to share with Mac clients over AFP. AFP is just basically the Apple file protocol and it's Apple's way, it's their system setup of how you share files with Mac clients. The Windows version is called SMB if you have Windows clients. And so if you've got a Windows machine at work, you've got a Mac at home and you want to access some files from that Windows machine, you want to go ahead and check share with Windows clients so that you can access those things from your workplace. 
You'll also notice it has Share with iOS devices over WebDAV. And this is kind of neat because this allows you to take files on your server and have access to them on your iPads and on your iPhones. So that when you're in programs like Pages, you can go access an outside server, access your home server, and you will see whatever folders that you have this box checked will show up inside of those programs and you can access them and edit them and manipulate them and use them on your iPad or your iPhone. So it makes a great way to be able to store your files at home instead of taking up that storage space on your iOS device. Uh, you can ask, also allow guests to access this share and then this is a neat one. You can make it available for home directories over AFP. And I want to talk about this one a little bit more and show you how that's done. So let me just cancel this here and show you how I set this up on mine. I created a new folder here. I just clicked the plus and I made it a home folder. And let me show you the uh, edit the SharePoint here. And uh, on my uh, home folders, you'll notice I, I checked make available for home directories over AFP. Now again, if you have Windows clients, you would check SMB, but I did it on AFP. And you can see that when you create these home folders, it likes to put it in the users folder at that level right under there. It'll put your new folder there, and then you have your users information right here. And you can see all of this stuff is exactly what uh, that you would normally see on a Macintosh for somebody's home folder. So it sets all of that information up right there. So that when you go into a user uh, user's account here, let me just go into uh, one of these accounts here, edit the user, you'll notice that there's a line right here for home folder. And you can select where you want the home folder to be. Local only means that it's only on the server or that local machine. Home folder means that it's actually a home folder or whatever folder you use to create your user means that it's actually on the network. It's actually sitting on the server and they can log into any computer uh, to be able to access their home folder. So it makes it very convenient and uh, it's kind of a neat feature that's set up right there. It's automatically there for you to change if you want to set it up. Now let me show you one more uh, application here uh, for how you can use this setup so that uh, it, let's just say for instance you want to hide a folder from your kids. You don't want your kids to access it. So I've got this database folder here and I only want my wife and I to have access to it. Let me show you how this works practically. So you'll see that I added my wife and myself here. We've got read and write permissions, but everybody else has no access. All right, to them the, the file doesn't exist. They don't get to view it at all. And I've got I checked to share it with Mac clients over AFP. Okay, so that's all set and ready to go. So let me uh, show you a computer that's logged in uh, with one of my kids. Let me show you that here. Okay, so I pull up his desktop. And you'll notice that uh, right now I'm screen sharing on his desktop. You'll notice that that database folder does not show here on the server. So he's connected to the server, but he can't see that database folder. It doesn't show anywhere on here. And so again, to him, that folder doesn't exist. Now, let me show you one of our computers that we're logged into. I'm screen sharing on a laptop. Notice that this folder does show up for me because I'm logged in as myself on the server and it does show up. So again, a very convenient way for you to be able to hide uh, files and things that you don't want other family members to see. It's a great way to be able to set that up. Now, that's all I have for this week on file sharing. That gives you an overview of how that works. You can set up your own folders and things right there on the server. Uh, it's a great way to be able to uh, you know, share things together. What I want to do uh, next week is I'll show you uh, a little bit more on how to get these things mounted on your other computers, how to set them up so you can access them uh, remotely and those kinds of things. And so we'll go into more detail on that. So that's all I have for this week. I'll come back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.